So there was a time in my life where um, I started praying in the spirit and the Holy Spirit started dealing with me on sowing and reaping. And that's when the revelation started being more of a passion or more of a purpose, more of a desire, a burning fuel within me because the Holy Spirit wanted to release certain things to me. But I had to use the seed to get those things. And it was an eye opening thing because in the New Testament, a lot of times people are waiting for the plan of God to happen. Because in their mind, Satan is able to piggyback off of the fact that God is good and, you know, he's going to work everything out. But the seed is how you receive the plans of God. And the non-sower has to fight their own battles. A non-sower has to, has to fight for themselves. They have to make themselves safe according to their own understanding. A non-sower has to fight their own battles. When you're not honoring God with money, you are in independence. So, when evil comes up against you, you got to deal with that evil. And no man could defeat evil without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one that could defeat evil. In life, there's so many people that are wicked and tricky and unintegral. They're liars, even in businesses. And when you sow in seed, you allow the angels of God to encamp around you. To deliver you out of all your troubles. That's what Psalm 34 verse 7 is saying. The angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him. That means those that are operating in his wisdom. The wisdom of the kingdom of heaven. The wisdom of sowing. The Lord put seed in your hand. So that you could place an investment. In your transformation. In your changes. God put seed in your hands so that you can invest in your deliverance, in your favors, in your open doors. He, he places seed in your hands so that you can use that seed as an expression, as a dialogue, as a conversation of your faith. When people sow seed, They are engaging the power of God for new seasons and new chapters and new relationships and new beginnings. If you look at what happened in Joel chapter two, the Lord was saying, I'm restoring to you the years that the locust, the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar has ate from you. But then it revealed it was the Lord's army. So the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, the locust, this was the Lord's army that he sent against people because they was blind to honoring him. It wasn't their desire. It, they wasn't thinking about it. But what God's saying, if you return back unto me, if you come back to my kingdom, if you start sowing again, I'll restore unto you the years. So a lot of times you hear people say that and they don't even know what the scripture was predicated on. The scripture was predicated on people that had returned back to honoring God. They had made a decision. I'm not going to be self-sufficient no more. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding no more. I'm not going to fear what flesh could do to me. I'm going to invest in you. I'm going to keep you as my source. And I know that you're going to deliver me as I trust in you. See, a lot of times there is a there is a veil on people's soul why they're not able to sow seed because demon spirits will occupy you with all type of things in your life so that that anointing will not even come to full fruition inside of you. Because when I when I really started sowing seed, I enter into a place of extreme focus. So I know that people can't get there unless they get focused. 
You can't get there while you're drifting and you 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 here today, gone tomorrow. That's not how how sowing works. Sowing is being still and knowing that I'm God. Is is stillness. In stillness, a person becomes acquainted with the grace of God to sow seed. Remember, Apostle Paul had the seed revelation, but Apostle Paul is. 15 years in stillness, in sanctification, in obedience. He's focused. That's how his eyes open up. Your eyes can't open up until you become still. The non-sower has to fight their own battles. The non-sower has to fight their own enemies. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 revealed that seed sowing is a shield creating activity. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 revealed that the seed is a shield activating activity. Shield. I, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. This is so amazing. We're talking about shields. Look at look look at what the Bible says right here in Psalm chapter twenty-eight, verse seven. Look what it says. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. If you look at what this text is saying right here. David is saying that the Lord is my strength and my shield. But then he's saying my heart trusted in him and is a continuation and I am helped. You can't trust in the Lord without sowing seed. Because he's going to put the seed in your hands that is carrying the possibility of you operating in your own form of safety and peace and pleasure. You could create that in your, your own understanding or You could sow the seed and you could trust the Lord for his plan. Something that happens when you start sowing is that there are angels of the Lord that were inactive in their ministry. They start doing ministry behind the scenes for you in the areas of your provision. They start speaking to people. They are activated by sowing. There are angels that are activated by your seed sowing, they are not moving until you sow seed. They're not moving until you honor God. Now, sowing is not something that you're supposed to approach off of the flesh. You have to experience the Holy Spirit giving you this grace because you humbled yourself and you wanted to serve the will of God with your moments, with your time, with your Every activity, you you are the only one that can receive that anointing because it, it's not going to last if you try to sow according to the flesh. Seed sowing according to the flesh will be stopped by Satan by the device of weariness. Because Satan, all Satan does is use the plot of weariness to stop you from doing a divine activity. So what happens when somebody is uh, weary? The mind starts to shut down on the idea. The mind starts to compromise with the idea. The mind starts to become adversarial, an opponent to the idea. Remember what happened. The disciples were in the flesh. The woman took an alabaster box and they told the woman, you could have gave this to the poor. 
So the disciples is a revelation of dealing with sowing according to the flesh. They didn't believe that this woman was doing the right thing by planting that abundance of money into Jesus. They said you could have did this and gave it to the poor. They didn't think that Jesus was worthy of that financial level of sowing. So do you understand that when we are dealing with that dimension and we're dealing with that flow of seed sowing, sowing has to be given to you because you are the one pursuing the kingdom of heaven. You are the one seeking you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Because even when God is leading you to sow, there's going to be people that set up by Satan to discourage you. That woman with the alabaster box, she stayed faithful with her sowing anointing and she activated what Jesus wanted her to activate. Are you seeing this? This woman understood that there was a plan of God that she was about to walk in. And she didn't even let people that seemed like they was close to Jesus stop her. So even when God gives you a sowing anointing, there's people set up by the enemy, even religiously, to stop you from honoring God. <laughs> Seed postponing principalities take on bodies of human flesh to convey the message of robbing God. Seed postponing principalities Take on human flesh of bodies to create the narrative of withholding pleasure from God through your investment into him. That's why your mind has to be made up. Look what Colossians chapter 3 verse 24 says. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Are you catching what this text is saying? It's saying that the Lord is going to reward you with the inheritance. Don't let yourself get involved in the fleshly mind that will debunk and downgrade and discredit God's ability to give you the inheritance while you're in this life on earth. It says, knowing that ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. Knowing that of the Lord, of the Lord means it is not of men. You know, men could be wishy-washy. Men could be double-minded. Men could lie. Men could trick. Men could deceive. But it says knowing that of the Lord, that of the Lord is important because you're dealing with a non-liar, a non-trickster. So when you sow in seed, the non-trickster is the one that is going to play out the movie and the script of your harvests. The harvest is, cannot come to you if you start playing with the fleshly mind during time. So what must you be careful with during the moments after you sow seed? What covenants are you re-entering? God told you not to watch CNN. You back watching CNN after you sow seed. How is the harvest going to enter into that rebellion? The atmosphere of miracles is being determined by the atmosphere of your heart. 
Harvest can't come if your heart is in hardness. Harvest can't come if your heart is in hardness. What is a hard heart? It is disregarding the divine demand of the spirit on you. Saints, do you know why people take surgery rather than losing weight? It's one thing. The desire to skip the pain of process and the process of pain. That's the only reason why people take surgeries. Seed sowing is a divine pain that God has desired everybody to embrace. And the pain is that you already have a knowledge that you could use the money otherwise. You could use that body part otherwise. You have knowledge of other ways to use what has been given and ministered to you for you to give back to God, you already have other ways to use that thing rather than giving it back to the Holy Ghost. So the pain of process and the process of pain is you denying those other knowledges that you opened up yourself to and made yourself available to a partaker of in the past. When a person starts sowing seed, the father delivers them from their strong enemies. There are people that you, you don't understand that Satan has possessed them to fight you. Whether it be your child's father, whether it be, whether it be your baby mama, whether it be your mama, your dad, your, whether it be your neighbor, your co-worker, there are people that are possessed by Satan to fight you. The seed delivers you from your strong enemies. That's why it's so important that you start sowing because you're going to have enemies that have the resilience of Satan embodying them to oppose you. And as you honor God, you enter into spirit warfare. You enter into the warfare of the Holy Ghost. Because you have already placed your investment in his assistance and his genius. Look what Psalm 124 verse 2 says. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Do you understand? David is saying that these enemies were possessed by Satan to fight us. It don't matter how much God love us, we would have lost the fight if we were not in the center of his kingdom operation. If his kingdom was not operating through us, they had the possession of Satan. Saints, remember, Michael struggled. And Michael and his army struggled with Lucifer and Lucifer's army. The whole point is that if you're not strong in the weapons of your warfare, you're going to lose wars. If you're not strong in sowing, you, you're going to lose to the thief. The thief come but to steal, kill, and destroy. So if you're not strong in sowing, the thief going to beat you. If you're not strong in honoring God, 
Your harvests are going to be stolen. Things that's supposed to happen for you, not going to happen for you. Because the enemy going to use the lack of you operating in your weapons in order to capitalize and exercise that dark and demonic power, that power to delay you, that power to destroy you, that power to create death in your path. Look what the Bible says right here. Look what it says right here. It says in verse 6, Psalm 124, it says, Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as prey to their teeth. What is the teeth realm of Satan? It's the realm of poison. The teeth realm of Satan, the bite. Ecclesiastes talked about the bite of the serpent. Jesus said, don't give what, what is holy to dogs. And dogs got teeth. What's their major weapon? Biting. You never saw a dog kick somebody to defeat them. The dog bites. So the teeth realm of Satan is where Satan is poisoning you which means giving you other options other than the kingdom of heaven. That's why people don't sow and enter into their promised land. They don't honor God and enter into their promised land. If you notice, all Satan got to do is because sowing requires you to have a man of God that you're sowing into. The word is coming to you from a specific man of God. All Satan got to do is sever your fire for your man of God. Then you can't sow. And then any other sowing that you do is none effect because God ain't stupid. The Bible said God ain't mocked. If God created Ananias to sow into Peter, Ananias goes sow into Nicodemus, God ain't going to bless Ananias. The seed is for Peter. The same way Abram's seed was for Melchizedek. When he matched the right person with the seed, the events of blessing that was in correlation with that sowing, it was acquainted with that sowing, attached to that sowing, it started materializing in Abram's life. Your sowing has a specific person and you got to die to yourself to stay connected to that person so that you could be on fire for them to sow into them and care about them. So the devices of Satan to even poison you and bite you so that you don't sow, you'll be at odds with God. Now when God pitch you to sow, you're not even listening, you're not even commenting, you're not even connected, you, you're not you somewhere else. That's why apostolically when a person is, is fully focused, you see, they keep the ministry going. I got people right now that keep my ministry going. If I was to depend on certain people, I would not even be here. You, I'm streaming on a software that costs thousands of dollars. I'm streaming on stuff that costs thousands of dollars. If I was to show you, I got a setup. I got cameras. I got lights all around here. All of this came from people buying this stuff for me. So imagine if I depend on somebody that's not focused, they don't have no fire, they're not, I can't accomplish these things. I've done conferences, done paid all this money for conferences, flights, all this stuff. It's because the person that is obeying the will of the father to complete his purpose for their life. And so they're focused. They're on fire and they're faithful. 
You got to understand why God even have you so in the thousands. Because you're taking up the mantle of many other people that won't sow at that level. And they won't let their self sow at that level either because how they spend their time, they're not vigilant about that. They're not hungry and thirsty for righteousness. So when God raises you up to be a big sower, I remember one time Dr. Mike Murdoch was telling people, uh, if there's 10 people that could sow this amount to help me out, and you know what I did? I just, this was some time ago, I just took those 10 people that he was talking about, and I sold the amount that it equal to, so he ain't got to When God gives you a bountiful sowing anointing, it's because people have been taken out by the devil to go astray. God put them with that same man of God that you with, but they're not faithful. So therefore, the Holy Ghost can't even build them up to fulfill the assignment of why they're with that man of God. Because they're struggling with demon spirits. Demons ain't going to let you complete your sowing assignment. Demons not going to let you come. You think a demon spirit going to let you complete your sowing assignment? No. You called to sow into a man of God. If you got demons, them demons, they, they, they know that their time is short. Either you're going to keep on sowing, you're going to keep on honoring God, you're going to keep in the fire of the Lord with your altar, or you're going to permit their altar to stay. So they are aggressive. They know the time. You give way to the flesh, you walk in the flesh, them demons going to make sure, oh, I'm going to stop you from sowing. So when, when God wants his kingdom to, kingdom to go forth, he uses uh, hand-picked people. He picked them according to the wisdom that they're using, the stewardship that they're using. He picks them and he said, let me use you. I'm going to have you sow for these five people that want to serve Satan, they don't want to serve me. So I'm going to use you to sow and take their place. That's what happens. God oftentimes, he'll take the mantles of people's harvest, their houses, their cars. And then when people look at you and talk about, oh, you got five cars, you got five houses. Yeah, I also got five instructions that wasn't even destined for me that I completed. I also fulfilled the callings of five other people. So when you look at me with Versace, you look at me with Gucci, you look at me with, 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 with name brand clothes and name brand cars and name brand things. Remember, some of this stuff wasn't even destined just for me. Some of this stuff was destined for somebody else that rather play with the devil than pray with God. You know, they always say whatever it, uh, God has for me is for me. That's a lie. Whatever is for you may never come to you in this life. It's going to come to somebody better than you. They're more focused than you. They're more faithful than you. They're more obedient than you. They're more lowly before God than you. They respect him and they fear him and they run after him. And if they do something wrong, they're not going to stay right there and say, I'm going to do it again. They're going to cut that thing off at the root and they're never going to let themselves do that thing again. They're going to follow through with the next phase of righteousness, the next phase of obedience, the next phase of worship. That's where the harvest be coming to people like that. That's why God gives you a bountiful sowing anointing. Somebody not listening to God. And they living for their flesh. They living for their ego. They living for their pride. And the Holy Spirit say, let me use you. Let me use you. I got stuff I need to do. I got stuff I need to accomplish. Let me use your hands. And when people let God use them, he make them multimillionaires. Because he blesses you because you stood in the gap. A bountiful sower is an intercessor for God. For his will to enter into the earth realm. A bountiful sower is an intercessor for God's will, for, for the will 
of God and the ministry of the angelic host to happen in the earth realm without any breaking of God's plan. 